One-to-one -one conversations with the UK graffiti writers you need to know. Writers before the fame, where it's all about style, getting up, and authenticity. Molotov Art and Paint Supplies proudly sponsor the Killer Keller podcast Graffiti Sweet Week special. Seven writers spread across three generations of UK graffiti. Headphones on, speakers up, and get ready for the conversation. Come on, ma. Please. We need the house. Sorry, you is. Part of fighting is. We love food because we hate boom things. Oh, look, oh, no. Watch them on them brain now. Killer Keller Fortified featuring Patwan. Available on all good music platforms now. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Killer Keller Podcast, and as ever, I've got the privy to just holler at some of my. Major inspirations, and my fanboy is up to 13 right now. That 18 in year old in me is up to 13. Ein, TPG, graffiti <laughs> writer, original doll inside the building. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. And, uh, you know, thank you for having me. Yeah. Pleasure. Come on. No, Come it's, on. you know, it's an it's a <clears> equal, <throat> equal pleasure. It's, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, I'm happy to be here. It's great. Yeah, we, we follow different circles and walks of life, but I think generationally sometimes we kind of cross and sometimes we don't, innit? Well, it's weird. There was this thing called, like, you know, Seven Connection as to what's his name, Kevin Bacon. <laughs> and it's like, that was like 20 years ago. Now it doesn't exist. Like, everybody knows somebody that somebody else knows. Mm -mm. It's like, you know, like... Barack Obama knows my name. <laughs> you know, it's like... <laughs> yeah. That's a yeah. that's a mad one. The, 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 yeah, everyone has a connection that isn't like so far removed anymore. It's like, yeah. you know, like we don't really know each other, but like we know mad people that know each other. Yeah. Well, this is how it all spawned, wasn't it? Yeah. We were at um, Mutual Friend Noki's event, wasn't we? Little JJ. JJ, the man, the myth. Yes. For those of you that ain't aware of Noki, he's 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 the the anonymity of his. Uh, Guerrilla style, uh, cut and paste material art in fashion and and on walls is something to behold. Isn't it? Yeah, he is. He is graphic designer before Photoshop was invented and turned his back on Apple computers, but does it in fashion. Mm. Yes, it's it's, yeah, yeah. it's almost like some crazy thought mixed media sort of thing going on, isn't it? Yeah, just, yeah, like an incredible genius that just creates, like, unique one-off pieces and just, yeah, just turns, yeah, just turns fashion upside down and creates something, like, incredibly simple, almost like Vivian Westwood, the way that Vivian Westwood, like, you know, just, like, creates these garments and then you put them on and they work. Yeah. And he does the, yeah, you know, he he creates these things mm. that are just like, for women, just beautiful. Like, yeah. takes the most raggedy old oversized t shirts, just kind of just touches it, and you put it on this woman, and it's like, oh, oh. God, I'd be there in a minute. Yeah, yeah. For, <laughs> the, what are they called? They're the, the aprons, weren't they? The, the NHS aprons. That yeah. Did, and they would, even on every girl, because I've got a couple of tops. They just look so much more sexual on, on, a, on yeah. a chick, you know, they drop. Yeah, yeah he just, he, he understands something and it's just like, mm. yeah, just like, without even trying to explain it, he just, he gets it and it's like, you know, I can like, me and him did like a couple of collaborations, you know, we've done some projects together, but it's like, yeah, mm. if there's a special lady in my life, I'll be like, yo, JJ, I want a T-shirt. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You do share quite a... a, a in my humblest opinion, like when I think of your stuff, you you walk a fine line with street art, graph, and what would be almost like, yeah, like that kind of more. I know you, I know you won't proclaim to have any sort of connectivity with, with fashion like that, but JJ is a great example of your collaborating. Do you know what I mean? Well, I you know I've always been into fashion, like so I've always been into graffiti. Yeah. I've always been into vandalizing things. The reason why I'm doing street art is because it's the perfect excuse for me to continue painting and not get arrested. Mm -mm -mm. And also, mm -mm. you know, I'm like, you know, I'm getting old. 
So it's a great way for me to make money. But if it, you know, if I didn't have financial commitments, I would still be doing graffiti. Mm. You know, if I didn't have the, you know, the threat of prison hanging over my head, then yeah, I'd still be doing graffiti. Graffiti to me is like the purest form. But within that, I've always been into kind of like, well, you know, graffiti is about expressing yourself. And for me, fashion has always been about expressing yourself. So I've always been into kind of like, you know, going to the clubs, dressing up, mm -hmm. wearing stuff that people can't get. And it's like the same as, same right. as graffiti. It's like, you know, putting your name in a place that somebody can't, mm -hmm. no one else can get to, or you're the first person to do that. And it's like, you know, I still do that now. It's like, I've just come back from Japan. It's like, just buying all this shit that, like, you can't get in London. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's, that's, that's what differentiates you from, like, the, the people that stand outside Supreme for hours on end. Do you know what I mean? I get that. I do. I, like... I never stood outside Supreme, but I've bought Supreme for like oh yeah but, since day one yeah yeah and like I've got I've got some kids now and like the oldest one Connor is like twenty five and I was like I just got these boxes of like Supreme North Face and like all these mad collaborations uh, and like I was just like yeah yeah yeah, yeah, never yeah, gonna, yeah I was like dude take this shit you're gonna have sex on the back of this <laughs> yeah 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 totally yeah, 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 yeah just yeah, gave yeah. it to my kids it's like, your kids think of that you because you know your your success it kind of it kind of um drips into like so much of modern culture and your your pieces your throw ups from when I can remember have been always recognizable like what do they think what do your kids think of all that business I don't really know like I don't know, they obviously think I'm kind of cool, but then I'm also, like, their dad. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, how cool can your dad actually be? Yeah. There's a, there is a ceiling, isn't there? Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like, it's like <laughs> yeah. I remember that uh, story, so, uh, what's his name? Damon from Blur. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, uh, his kids go to some school in, like, West London, and he's with, like, Mick Jones from The Clash. Yeah. And they're dropping off their kids at school, and the two kids are like, "Oh, can you wait here? You, you, you two are so embarrassing." <laughs> what? And it's like, <laughs> hold on, you're with Damon from Blur and Mick James from The Clash, and yeah, the yeah. kids are embarrassed of you. It's totally like totally grounding them. Too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no dad has a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's <laughs> yeah, words from, the, from yeah. the playground games. Yeah. So. It's like, oh, dad, you're so embarrassing. It's like I was in The Clash. I'm in Blur. It's like. So, yeah, no dad's got a chance. So, no matter what you do, it's like your kids are always going to be like, mm. oh, go away, yeah, drop me off at the end of the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they you know, they kind of think I'm, I don't know, maybe cool, but, yeah, like, they phone me up and they're like, oh, can you get me on the guest list for this? Can you get me on the guest list? Yeah, and so, you're like, yeah, I'll do that for I've got you. Yeah. Sometimes. sometimes. Yeah. How many kids you got? Seven. Seven wonderful Human beings. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Eh? You must be I know. One of them's a drug dealer. Uh, the other one's training to be a nurse. Uh, not a nurse, a, a teacher. She's doing teach training. So she's mixed the sensible occupations. one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Another one is uh, a mechanic. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of like quite sensible. He's just had a kid, so he's the one responsible for turning me into a granddad. Mm. Ah, c congrats. Granddad in the house as well. See, I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, like, yeah, my game is over now. <laughs> I told my friend the yeah, other day, and she was like, oh, you're a gilf. I was like, what's a gilf? <laughs> 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 we'll subtitle that on the video. Yeah, yeah I was like, what's a gilf? <laughs> oh, gee. <coughs> so, oh, gee. Yeah, and then, like, there's four others that are all still kind of like a little bit little, so. Yeah, yeah, so they're still the crew. Do, do you reckon, like, kids... Your own kids adopt a creative gene when you... When... Uh, I don't know. Like, my dad was a black cab driver. My mum was just a mum. So within my immediate family, there was nothing kind of pushing me in a creative direction. Mm. Uh, however, there's like, you know, my mum's... Uh, my mum's brother was a bit of an artist, but, like, not successful, just did it for fun. Yeah. And, was, and was, you know, it was kind of quite good if you like that kind of stuff. But the the point or the thing that changed me was, you know, kind of getting into fashion, being different in, you know, my class of kids at school, you know, wonky eye moles, you know, and then kind of getting into fashion, so kind of, 
you know, rather than shying away from being different, I mm. kind of like kind of tried to embrace it. Mm-hmm. So I got into fashion and like kind of yeah embraced it, and then uh, I found a book called Subway Art by Martha Cooper and Henry Chalfont, and it was mm. like the first thing I ever saw about graffiti and became my bible and changed my life. Yeah, it changed your life. Yeah, I was talking to Drax about this. It's, uh, like, <laughs> the amount of times I went into my li- library at school and like jacked that book for yeah. years. It yeah, it like was the years. first thing I ever stole. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. stole it from W.A. Smith down the King's Road. <laughs> King's Road, yeah? Yeah, King's so, Road. Authenticity. I was, yeah. No, I was on the way of, to see if I could steal something from Vivian Westwood. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, are you originally from around... Uh, these parts? South London. South so London. I was born in Suffolk. So I was born in St Thomas's Hospital, so right opposite Big Ben. Yeah. And then kind of like spent, I think, like seven years in like, one of these like seven years, I can't remember, so like Old Kent Road, mm-hmm. East Lane, and then moved out to Lewisham and then moved out to Sidcup. Right, Sidcup, right? Yeah, my dad was a racist cab driver. Yeah, well, yeah, because cab drivers are often immigrant yeah. to that. Yeah, so they get out. He's like, yeah, there's too many. Rah, rah, rah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we, so we wound up moving out of sick up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like BNP, whatever, yeah, Nigel yeah. Farage. Yeah, head, head, head HQ. Yeah, of, right, yeah. dickheads. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah, spent quite a lot of time down in sick up. And then, I think I was like, probably like 18... Just got out of there as quick as I could. Of course, yeah, yeah. And lots of action. I think I've been back once. I'm just like it's the most depressing place. Yeah. I'd rather yeah. go to prison yeah. than go back to sick <laughs> up. <laughs> well, for prison at least you get four meals and you get a good conversation. At least you don't have to talk to my dad. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, I think we share a similar kind of uh, path. My family were never like incredibly musical. Um, we lived out in like the, the sticks. Where's the mean? sticks? Well, n- near Horsham, you know, that kind of yeah. area of t- like further south, a little further south, more close to the Brighton. Yeah, I've been in trains in Horsham. Yes, yes, I'm very much aware of that. Yes, there's a, there's a, there's a train yard in Horsham. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know. That's why I refer to it right now. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you're probably you're probably correct me because you 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 obviously have the opportunity to um, explain how far back this goes, but I remember you. Even when you say the word graffiti, right, your voice is such a nostalgic hit to my head of, like, because I first connected you with the, the dub and tharp you were putting up yeah. from Kings and Toys. Yeah. And I just remember your your segment, your segue in, in that. Um, that was my first intro, and TPG was it, man. Like, as a crew... Dangerous, absolutely tearing. Yeah, like TPG as a crew, like it kind of it started with a guy called Eggs from uh, Finland, and originally it stood for the Transit Poltergeist, yes, yeah. which is like such a shit, <laughs> cold Europe kind of vision of a graffiti crew. <laughs> uh, but then, like you know, there was a bunch of us from London, you know, Morn, Nemo. You know, mm. Hill. I know, yeah, yeah, a bunch of us. And uh, yeah, TPG turned into Trains, Pills, and Girls. <laughs> <laughs> which I think was a little bit more appropriate to kind of like our attitude towards things. But yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was a, yeah, we did a lot. Yeah. And Oka too, right? Oka. Ollie was never in TPG. Uh, but yeah, yeah, Oka was like my boy, one of my That's old it. friends, and. And yeah. Elk as well. Yeah. Like, you guys were talking. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Elk. And, yeah, like, we were never in, like... Like, there was like, a, there was, like, a little group of us, and it was never about, like, oh, we've all got to be in the same crew together. You know, you've got to be in WRH or WD or Mowers or mm. fucking TPG or PFB or whatever. Mm. It was just, like, a few people that connected and just had, like, the same attitude towards painting and... Basically, that attitude was like, we do stuff, no one knows, no one sees it, never say anything to anyone about anything. All right. So proper Columbo undercover... Well, it's just like most people get arrested because... They blab. Yeah, they talk about crap. And 
They've got like selfies in the yard and they've got photos on their, you know. Mm. And especially nowadays, it's like, you know, you don't even get arrested for criminal damage anymore. You get arrested for conspiracy. Yeah, photos. No, conspiracy. So it's like, if me and you talk about going to paint a train together and you and I are the same crew and we go down to some train yard in Basingstoke and me and you paint a train. Oh. So you write your name, I write my name and we both put up, you know, whatever crew yeah. in TPG. So that means you and I have conspired to cause criminal damage. Right. Conspiracy is way worse than yeah. actually doing criminal damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's when you start getting like two years. Yeah, you conspired. Yeah, there was a there was a character that is looked upon unfavorably within the scene. You've mentioned him in a couple of interviews before. This guy from Bristol who travelled over and he was literally here to just like. Oh, Colin, Colin, say so. Yeah. yeah, he's originally from, I think he's from Brighton originally. Brighton, okay. No, not Brighton, so yeah, yeah, Bristol, you're right. Uh, yeah, uh, he was the one that uh, sent everybody to prison. And he was the one that kind of turned criminal damage into conspiracy to cause criminal damage. And yeah, yeah. he sent everyone to prison. He was that guy? Yeah, he cleaned up mm. graffiti. You said something really like, um, something that kind of, rang true in my head, like, I remember, like, the, the, the general rule of graph is, like, you start with your tags, throw up stubs, then you go on to your colours and blah, blah, blah. You said in a particular conversation, I think it's for Guardian, you said that, you know, by default, like, graph, if, if you're having to constantly watch over your shoulder with a camera, if you're constantly being chased, you, you, inevitably you're going to put up shit pieces. If you, yeah. if you let people do what they want to do, you can, you're not going to stop it. They'll, it will only get better. Yeah, no, like, you'll never stop graffiti. No. Like, you know, like, you know, uh, British Transport Police, they, like, they got rid of Vandal Squad. Mm. And, you know, six months after getting rid of Vandal Squad, you know, something happened with a cleaner getting electrocuted and health and safety went down to, the, like, the yards where they clean the stuff. So they weren't cleaning stuff. And all of a sudden... Kids are back on the trains and they're mm. playing stuff. Mm -mm. Mm. And it's like, you know, it's like, you know, I travel a lot and it's like, you know, you go to Denmark and you go to Paris and it's like, you've got these walls that started off with tags and then they got dubs and now they got pieces. Yeah. And now they're full colour production. And, and it's like, awesome. Yeah. Like, and it's like, you know, I get the train, but, you know, like, you know, I kind of live at London Bridge, so I get the train in and out of London Bridge quite often. And it's just like, Shit chrome tags, shit yeah. chrome tags, you know, chrome throw-ups. And, you know, I was doing those, you know, dubs, me and Nemma, like, yeah, 10, 12 years ago. But so much more better. If you'd have left it, yeah, I mean. rather than waste millions of pounds and cleaning it off, yeah. left it, now that whole line yeah. would be full of colour. I know. Something that so somebody because the kids ain't got time, to... they're not doing as good yeah. pieces as it could have been back in and the day. And it's like, yeah. you know, it's like they waste all this money cleaning it off, and it's like, no one looks out the window and goes, oh, these pesky kids, why can't they stop them doing it? Like, no, no one cares. It's yeah, just, so just sensitised, desensitised. Yeah, it's just it. urban noise. So, you know, just rather than just, like, have a load of rubbish, just let the kids do what... Obviously, there's an issue with, you know, kids getting hit by trains and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's like, yeah, it would eventually evolve into something nicer. Yeah, I totally agree. Whenever you... And I feel sorry for, like, like especially the, in the the more national rail routes, like you say, like London Bridge or um, Euston, uh, Kings... Like, these are, like, prominent pieces. Like, even Paddington. Do you remember when the fume piece used to be? Like, yeah. The six-footer. Yeah, yeah, people on the just ledge, used yeah. To, people... That became, like, a, an, an, a treasure. Like, yeah. when you're coming into it, people back in the day, like... If you come from Reading, you look out for the fume piece. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what Yeah, that massive, like, yeah, because there was the ledge. Yeah. You know, me and Elk did the ledge, and there was, like... That's like, right, yeah, that's right. Yeah, oh, fume, yeah, course, fume, yeah. yeah, fume and teach are, like, these little kids that, like, yeah. they step the graffiti game up. Yeah. That whole area, really, when you think about it... Didn't, didn't um... Was it State of Art and um, Goldie? Did they have a battle... Around there, was there a graph? Yeah, yeah. oh, I can't remember. Yeah. I think Drax mentioned it, but yeah, it's such he a remembers good stuff more than I do. Trust me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's got he's got some um, knowledge. Yeah, he's got some knowledge, and he doesn't drink anymore. So yeah, he can remember stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that back in that uh, back in them days, 
right? This is my fanboy switching on right now because I've got so many, so many yeah. questions. Why yeah. Horsham lay up in places like that um, compared to now? Like, uh, what what do you think was of an advantage to you for for day age outside of just like cameras and shit? Was there anything else that because it always, almost seemed so much more um, nostalgic and innocent and uh, available? Uh, I don't know. Like, there was obviously a generation of people that painted before we did, and that generation of people were like, oh, yard's getting hot. And then we'd turn up and cut a hole in the fence or, mm. you know, yeah, just just do something different. And now, because we didn't know what it was like mm. then, you know, I remember going barking and, like, you know, you could literally hop over a fence. Mm-hmm. And yeah. now there's, like, massive great big fences and razor wire, and I'm like, I ain't doing that. But, like, the kids nowadays are like, yeah, we'll just get an angle grinder or cut hole in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they don't know any difference, so... Yeah, I guess it's a, it's a, for every time there's a level yeah. up, there's another one takes it. And yeah. it's like, you know, we'd go yards and, like, you know, we'd spend an hour and do, like, a nice piece, and now the kids are, like, got, like, 15 minutes mm. or... So, yeah, it's, you know, it's, like, generational. And it's like, you know, the harder you make... You're never going to stop it. And the harder you make it for people to do, all you're doing is making it more ugly. Mm. Mm, yeah, it is, yeah. A time restraints and whatnot. Yeah, and it's like, oh, yeah, fine, yeah, fine. We'll just get fire extinguishers uh, uh. and do back jumps with fire extinguishers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, hard, it's it? not yeah. pretty, but, you know, as somebody with a graffiti mentality, oh, my God, nothing better than jumping down fire extinguisher and just doing a big smiley face on the side <laughs> of a train whilst it's running. <laughs> Dude, that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. YouTube hit. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. A, yeah, exactly. That's virality. And, yeah, reference. and it's like, you know, graffiti is about, you know, having fun. So, you know, give us three hours in a train yard and we paint something nice. Give us 20 seconds, we'll do something fucking funny. <laughs> I've got, actually, I've got a question to ask you, which I didn't ask Drax. I mean, I'm going to try and keep them as widespread as possible because, um, yeah, I think we're dealing with two very different characters here. <laughs> did you did, did you ever have a conscience once you'd done something, like, on a train or something? Did you ever go home? And I don't mean from, I don't mean from a moral point of view of, like, the, 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 the transport um, system or PTP or anything. I'm talking more like on a... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get got for, I could get got for that. Fuck. Did you ever that? Ever have that? No, the only reason, the only time I ever thought, oh, maybe we shouldn't have done that on the daytime was when I got caught. <laughs> 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 if you think about it beforehand, then, you know, you're going to start going, ooh, ooh, and then all of a sudden you start getting digi and you're like, and yeah. then you start making your mates paranoid and... The whole thing spirals. Yeah. Mm. So, no, never. Yeah, never. I'm like... No. Well, we did like fuck that kind of attitude. Yeah. 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 No, definitely not. Like, have I ever regretted doing graffiti? Yeah, when I've done a one tag extra and I got caught, or when. Yeah. So once you've been nerfed, yeah. you're like, oh, fuck. But even then, like, not really great. Like, you know, I've been really, really fortunate. Like, in the grand scheme of things. Like, you know, I've paid fines, I've done community service and blah, 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 but nothing's really ever happened to me. Yeah, no one's died. Do you no, know what I mean? no one's died. Right, we've lost an arm and, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah, my mate Crow. Yeah, 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 yeah Crow. Yeah. So, you know, there's been a couple of things, but yeah, no one, like, super close to me has died. You know, a few mates have gone to prison for a minute, but. Yeah. Nothing that bad. Yeah. But then, you know. You walk down the train tracks at three o'clock in the morning. Mm. Yeah. You know. You set your own head. That's what yeah. Saying. Yeah, actually, you know what? Now you can't think about it. It's not actually the graffiti itself that causes the, the damage. It's the processes and what you've got to get to get to the graffiti. Yeah. Yeah. But then if there wasn't that process, then, you know. It would be if, fun. If they legalised graffiti and they gave us a load of walls to paint, then. Yeah. Right, well, what's the fun in that? Yeah, 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 yeah totally. You know, yeah, where's the crypto it's factor? Like, yeah, it's like graffiti art, graffiti writers, graffiti vandals, they're not trying to be artists. Mm. They want to be vandals. Mm. So if you gave, you know, us a load of walls to paint, mm. it's boring. Yeah. You know, it's it's the element of doing, doing the most ridiculous crime in the world, 
in a place you're not supposed to do it for no financial reward. <laughs> and get away with it. And get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> and show off to your mates. Yeah, yeah. But like you said, with TPG, there wasn't really much of a showing off game going on. It was more like, it was an internal kind of, yeah. Well, we were, you know, we were, we were all a little bit older. We were all, you know, most of us were arrested before. We wanted to paint trains and we didn't want to get arrested. And the quickest way to get arrested is to blab. Mm, mm, hands down, yeah, yeah. So you know we were you know we were doing stuff and yeah and not kind of advertising ourselves, yeah. which is like why were we doing it? You know, because we're weird and it's like you know it was, it was the fun of doing it. Yeah, I don't think there's any like for instance, right? The Noki event. There was probably like maybe how many people do you reckon were in there? About thirty five, forty. But you know, in mm. tran in traffic, that you know, yeah. I think at peak it was probably about fifty. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's no money in it. I jumped up and did it. I did it for a mate. And, yeah. And lo and behold, you're there. Like, it's, it's funny how, like, the things that you don't realise make any difference to your life at the time of doing it, it leads you to a point. That's the beauty of life. It is indeed. And I know how corny it sounds, but... And it's very true. Mm. One door closes. <laughs> wank, wank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is. yeah. yeah. What happened to what? I mean, what's what happened to Elk? What happened to Nima? Nima's like one of the like the most donest. Like, right, listen, <laughs> right, I'm now listen. We're showing our ages here, conversating about this because this guy, and this is in my humblest opinion, you know, what I mean, he like, he's one of the reasons why I'm called Keller. Like, I took the A and the E of his name. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And then I took Kilo, I took K and L. Like these mm. guys were so influential. Do you know what I mean? What what happened to Nima? Uh, I spoke to him. This morning, about two o'clock. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> just you know, this is the separation thing again, isn't it? The degrees, you know. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's a, he's trying. He is. I don't know. Yeah, I can't really say anything. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, he's alive though. He is alive, and he's not doing illegal graffiti. However, there's always a, a comeback, uh, a midlife crisis. Okay, yeah. Yeah. The, the the comeback kid, it's uh, that's a process in itself, isn't it? Yeah. Like when you get into this whole kind of alphabet thing, moving on, and like you're looking at like now you're talking numbers now, like you're talk the amount of you I mean you used to be prolific with your throw up. Mm. That throw up around London was going everywhere. Now you've got this whole kind of palatable alphabet design that there's always pretty much been it's. It's unmissable, you know. I think companies are accidentally like filming them in their commercials for you to go yeah. and grab because they're everywhere. You yeah, know? no, it's uh, it's amazing. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's weird how it kind of like all changes. It's like you know, you do this stuff that kind of turns into street art, and you're you're do basically you're doing it because you have this passion to paint, and you don't want to get arrested, so. You find an avenue to like continue doing what you want to do, and that avenue happens to be street art. And you do lots of, you know, you know, for example, you know, painting the uh, the, the letters on the shutters, mm. and then that turns into something, and then you do something else, and then next thing you know, you've lawyered up and you're suing Audi because they've used one of your paintings in an Audi commercial, yeah. and you're like, oh, yeah. this yeah. isn't when I started doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was mad. I think I tagged you in that video. <laughs> Dude, the fucking lawyers got paid more than I did. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's the principle, I suppose, at the time, isn't it? It's like, you know, if, you know, if, like, if Audi had, or whoever made the, made the commercial had, like, sent me an email going, oh, yeah, you know, we want to film this, but they didn't. And it's mm. just like, you know, the fact that they think, because there's a painting and it's in the street, that they have the right to come along and start a commercial for their new car, mm. like five mm. seconds, which doesn't sound like a long amount of time, but it's a 30 second commercial. Mm. That's yeah. like, yeah. That's, that's like, enough. Yeah. yeah. In front of my painting. And they're blatantly using me and my painting and, you know, whether I'm called or not, you give a shit, to promote their car. And it's like, whoa. Yeah. Not right. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, you know, it's like what just happened with Revoke. And uh, was it like uh, H and M? Mm, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, and it's like, 
hold on, you're pissing off a load of people that enjoy and relish vandalising stuff yeah. for fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. See what happened to HMM all over the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it kind of, it's them not doing it, but they're going to get some use out of a, a piece that, from somebody that has done it. It's sort yeah. of almost like making, trying to make themselves come across as, yeah, it's like wearing a rock and roll T-shirt sort of thing. It's yeah, like... like t- What's it, called? What's it called? I was just checking, sure, making sure I wasn't wearing my Beatles T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, it's like wearing a Ramones T-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like a bloody Ramones. Yeah. But it isn't. What's it called? Uh, cultural appropriation. Yeah. And it's like, you know, with the permission of the artist, mm. yeah, appropriate our, our cultural mm. whatever we are. But it's like, don't just feel like you have the right to, go and do to that. come and take it. You know, you, 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 H&M wouldn't like it if I walked into their shop and started taking things. Taking photos in there, you know. They, Just taking like their them. clothes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get the right up. <laughs> it's true. It's yeah. true. And I find that, I find that. So, um, it's ironic. It's ironic. And like you say, I think a lot of it now is like, well, graffiti kind of is part of... It's the tapestry of like a city. It's the tapestry of our culture. No, it totally is. It's like yeah, it's You've got to there. Give it back. You've got to pay back. You've got to, yeah. You know, all those years of like people risking themselves. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like I don't earn a particularly huge amount of money, and you know I've got kids and ex-wives, and you know when I do earn money, it invariably goes to like you know mm. mouths to feed and blah blah blah. So it's like you know if I get the opportunity to earn some money, then great. Yeah. You know if I if I'm comfortable with the company that I'm working with, you know, and they're not beating up baby seals or, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. then I'll do it. But that's my decision. Don't come along and take my work. There you go. And use me to sell a car that I can't yeah. afford to buy. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. You've been warned, motherfuckers. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yes. Yeah. yeah. You know my lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> but this thing's taking you a I mean... Regardless of finance or whatnot, I mean, you've got a, such an iconic look now about the, the... For those of you that have not seen major parts of, like, the more clubbier sides of, of London, um, particularly in the East End, you, these alphabet graffiti pieces that, that constantly appearing, that's, that's, that's Ein. And, but you've, you've had them bought from... Bought by loads of different, like, high-end, like, politicians and yeah so uh crazy so i did this collaboration there's this posh handbag lady called anya heinmark i think she's she's definitely still working she's definitely still doing stuff in japan but yeah she used to be quite big in london she's she's a londoner uh so i did a collaboration with her she's kind of like expensive like kind of like mulberry kind of esque Mm. and uh she did a tote bag that said i'm not a plastic bag Mm. and it kind of blew up. Mm. And then she kind of like, on the back of that, I did a collaboration with her, and we did four different tote bags, which were like, I think they were like 125 quid or something, but yeah, relatively cheap for like what she was selling, and you know, she had boutiques in like Sloane Square and Harrods. and So I did a collaboration with her, and then like a year later, she phoned me up, and she's like, oh, hi, Ben, uh... Uh, just had an interesting conversation. Uh, Downing Street would like your telephone number. I was like, okay, why? And she's like, uh, so David Cameron had just been like, yeah, just become the Prime Minister. And she's like, uh, so David's going to America to meet Obama and they've agreed to do an art exchange and they're looking at maybe using a piece of your art. I was like, interesting. So I was like, yeah, sweet. So I was like, yeah. So I was like, yeah, yeah. Give him my number. So then, like five minutes later, Downing Street phoned me up, and they're like, yeah. So, yeah, David's going to meet President Obama on the first official state visit, and they've agreed to do an art exchange, and we'd like to present Obama with one of your paintings. I was like, fucking joking. <laughs> anyway, uh, oh how the world turns. Yeah. So yeah, I I basically I gave. I gave uh, Great Britain one of my paintings uh, because otherwise the taxpayers would have had to pay for it. Mm-hmm. So I basically I gave him a painting 
And it was like, it was a bit of a no brain. I was like, dude, this is going to blow up in the press. Yeah, and yeah. like, everything's going to sell. So I was like, yeah, yeah, just take it. I had no idea who else they were talking to, whether they were considering like five different artists or ten different artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and just I was started like, to win it. You're like, oh, yeah. And I was like, yeah, if this is the difference between me going, oh, yeah, the painting's five grand, or me going, yeah, the, have the painting. I was yeah. like, just have it. So, yeah, so I gave him the painting and they flew to. Uh, Washington and took the painting with them and gave it to Obama and and this is this is how lucky I am because Samantha Cameron was pregnant so she couldn't fly so every time a prime minister goes and meets like the president of America yeah. all the press talk about is what the wives are wearing of course yeah. but Samantha wasn't there so they needed to find something else to talk about so all the press talked about was there's a graffiti vandal, and now David Cameron's giving his paintings. So, <laughs> so yeah, you can't just, buy that. Yeah. You can't. So literally, I had like three days of like Constantly. every newspaper, awesome. every TV crew camped outside my studio interviewing me. Wow! Like literally everything that was available in the market sold out like within like a minute. Ain't that? Ain't that irony? And it's that's yeah. The tables turn. Yeah, so... What you, what's your immediate thought of that? Like, what, like thinking back to it now, what's the, is that one of, like, a glory moment? Or is that one of... Has it kept going? <coughs> no, no, it definitely, hasn't, it definitely hasn't kept going. You know, it's like, you know, as you know, like, careers like this. Absolutely, yeah. And I say this know, all the time, all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, like, it isn't, like, a continuous, like... Like you're just walking up, walking up towards some like heaven esque place, and mm. then you're Jay Z. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you do a good job, and then you do something, and then you do something for nothing, and then you, yeah, and you do another, and then you get paid, and then you don't get paid, and then you do an amazing job, yeah. and then they go bankrupt, and they don't pay you, and yeah, yeah. you know, it's just like, you know, it's, it's it's all a drama. But that was definitely it helped my career like off the hook. Uh, and incredibly surreal. So, like, two months after, like, they did the painting exchange, and it was all over the newspapers, mm. and, you know, obviously, like, my mum was so proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah isn't that weird, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, although justifiably so, it is mad, like, my mum and dad, like, I could turn around and say to them, oh, yeah, I've done a show of Prince, I did a show of Pharrell, nothing. As soon as you've done something with Simon Cowell on TV, <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh yeah, you made it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look at this. You know, it's straight to yeah. their mate's house and show them what you've done, yeah. you know. Yeah, no, it's incredible. I'm sure my mum's got like, yeah. you know, the front page of the Sunday Times. Stop a shrine in it in yeah. the house, yeah. That's right. But then like, yeah, so like two months after this happened, I got a phone call from Downing Street and it was like, oh yeah, hi, uh, yeah, uh, David and Samantha would like to invite you to Downing Street to say thank you. What? So I what? went to Downing Street. <laughs> 